Spirit. Amen. Amen. The presence of the Lord in this hall. The Lord says, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am present there. And Lord, we thank you for once again being present here in our midst. Guide us, bless us, heal us, inspire us as we listen to this talk. Part of this belief that you will come again. Be with us, Lord. Time also. Give us the grace and the strength to prepare us for your coming. We make this prayer to Christ our Lord. Amen. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. All right. Okay. So this topic I took uh, because it's very important. Our topic also it's a part of our beliefs. Okay. It's a central thing, a primary belief of our of our faith also. Okay. So uh, we know that Jesus will come again. Okay. So the, there are a number of questions that come to our mind is we are asking why, but that question is when. Okay. The God will, Jesus will come again when. But the, the whole thing is the church also believes, the Catholic Church also believes, because that's where it's part of a creed. When you recite the creed, I believe God the Father Almighty, He will come again mm -hmm. to judge the living and the He will come again. He says that. Mm -hmm. If you remember in the Eucharist also, the mystery of faith when He used to say that Christ has died, Christ will come again. So that was a part of our belief, yes. So you just can't take only Christ who was born, died, rose, but He will come again on Susan. All together. Okay, that's, that's a part of our belief. Okay. And also, if you remember in liturgical, liturgical cycle also, somewhere we focus too much. Just before Christmas, the Advent, mm -hmm. do you know that Advent, we not only mm -hmm. prepare for the first coming of Jesus, mm -hmm. but we also, the first three weeks of the four week of the Advent, mm -hmm. the first three weeks the church wants us to focus on the second coming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the reading will be all that I'll, I'll put up on the screen now, so all that reading. So, so. Throughout the liturgical cycle and our church life, we are, in a way, expressing that faith in Jesus is coming again, okay? So that's what it is. So one of the primary truths of the Catholic faith, okay, that Jesus will come again. That's a part of our belief. So we are, we are waiting for his coming, right? So that's what it is. So now, there are... <coughs> Some Christians believe in imminent coming, means that Jesus is round the corner, is coming soon. So some of their beliefs are, is the imminent second coming of Jesus, which means he's just round the corner, he's coming, okay, Jesus is coming soon. But now we have already crossed 2,000 years and still he has not come. <laughs> How imminent it is. So the whole, that, so the, that's what it is. So, so, the second coming of Jesus will signal the end of the world. Okay, there will be signs which scripture talks about the end of the world when it happens. There will be signs that you will see in the world which signals that Jesus' second coming is close. So they now connected the second coming of Jesus, the end of the world and second coming. So, but question is still is that when, all right? So that is a, a, their belief. And then this bill is based on the three scripture quotation, which is synoptical gospel, Mark chapter 13, Mark chapter 24, chapter 21, because they all three gospels are very similar, that's why it's the same passage. So he talks about the end of the world. Jesus talks about the end of the world. So this is called eschatological discourse. Now I need to understand what is eschatology. Anyone knows what is eschatology means? Means about the end, about the last, okay? The word comes from the Greek word eschaton, means last, okay? So it's a science and a study about the final destiny of the human person, society, and the world, okay? So that's what it is, so eschatology, the discourse which Jesus talks about in the, all the three synoptic gospel, in the end, talks about the end of the world. And so end of the world will be the coming of Jesus, second coming of Jesus, then both this will coincide, okay? So that's what it is, so that's based on this, uh, uh, the, the three gospel passage, and so let's see 
uh, more about this second coming of Jesus, right? Okay, we also understand, we also need to answer this question about this three question raised by some of our Christian is that is Jesus coming imminent? Close. How close? Now for the 2000 years they are talking about imminent, imminent, imminent. Paul was mistaken in one of his letters. He said, he felt that Jesus is coming soon. But later on in Corinthian he realized that his delay so he changed his understanding of all things. Mm -hmm. So let us answer this, some of this question. Alright? The imminent second coming. Is it what the Lord is saying is uh, coming is very close. Okay. Some claim this doctrine is taught in the New Testament, especially in the eschatological discourse, discourse on the end of Jesus. So we will take one passage on eschatological discourse, Mark chapter 13, what chapter 13, and we'll dissect that, okay, and see what the Lord has to say about his second coming. And we'll go passage by passage, all right? So this is what it is, eschatological discourse on <coughs> All these chapters. So any one of this passage we can take and study it. So now for our class now, I'm just taking uh, Mark chapter 13. So all these are last ch chapters where the, Jesus talks about uh, end of the uh, world and, and of his second coming. All right. So we'll just go into this Mark 13 and see whether is Jesus second coming imminent. So that question we will try to answer. <coughs> is Jesus Anyway, in that passage, told us that his uh, end is, uh, is coming is very imminent. Okay, so that's what the word will go. Okay, so this in chapter 13, uh, what we have done is it's uh, uh, divided this passage. Okay, but this passage is a apocalyptic uh, literary form where the, the writer, in a way, writes the literature, this passage, in a form of a, what is called something that is revealed. That is something that is hidden is revealed to us. Okay, so more talks about okay something that will come up in future, something that will happen in future, and so this is a complex literature. Okay, when we uh, when Jesus talks about uh, and the, and the revelation also in the same line. Okay, but then Jesus speaks number of things in this passage, chapter thirteen, and so he talks about the end of the world. It talks about end of the Jerusalem, so in the verse, okay, so it speaks of, that's why when we open the passage, it, we can't easily make out like which passage is talking about the end of the world, which passage is talking end of the, so that's all the, the scripture scholars helps us to understand passage in a deeper way. So all this talk that I'm doing also, not only we understand our beliefs better, but we also get an insight into the scripture. Uh, that's what it is. So all our beliefs are backed up, supported by the scripture and we get a real, real good insight into the scripture also. So this is what it is, the scripture by the divided into a number of parts, introductions, okay, the chapter 3, 1 to 4 is first introduction, then it talks about the end of the world from 5 to 30, then it talks of the end of the Jerusalem, 14 to 23, it talks about from 24 to 20, again, it keeps on alternating. So as an ordinary reader, we just you know, can't make out which passage he's talking about or not. So this becomes very easy to understand. Keep this in mind. So sometimes we, when we read, some of these people are confusing the end of the world with the end of the Jerusalem. So that's what it is. Okay. So and he, and then from 28 to 31, end of the Jerusalem, and from 32 to 36, end of the world, and then the conclusion in the verse 37, all right? So I will put it up on the screen, this scripture passage. You know what is this scripture passage talks about? Have you any idea? Mm -hmm. Some signs about the earthquake will happen, famine will take place, you know, you know, a little frightening type of a scripture passage, okay? Yeah. 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 So let's see the scripture, okay? Let's go to the scripture passage, okay? The introduction, it talks about one, uh, one to four of the introduction, chapter 30. So when they are, Jesus and disciples went to the temple, they were appreciating this temple that took so many years to build and all that thing. And then finally Jesus said, what you see, it will not remain there. 
as he talks about in a way predicting prophecy of Jesus that this building, beautiful building will be pulled down. So they are asking when. So now the whole thing is talking about the temple of the Jerusalem. So this is first four uh, verses of the chapter 13 is all about, about the temple. Then suddenly Jesus jumps to talk about the end of the world and end of Jerusalem and all that. So okay, let's go to the next passage after 4, 1 to 4 is the introduction. The, the whole topic, he started discussing about the temple, then and goes on to talk about some uh, end of the world now. From 5 onward, he talks about take care that no one deceives you. Okay? Is that there will be war, or rumors of war, and all that thing, earthquake happening, and all that famine, and all that thing. So he talks of the end of the world. This was the sign that will accompany. That this was the sign that you will see in the world. Okay? So this is Jesus talking about in the same chapter started speaking about a temple now suddenly he talks about the end of the world the signs will happen signs will take place okay so earthquake will happen and all the famines and all that okay and then further again till 13 from 9 onward now can I go ahead yes. you tell me okay if you, are, if you are reading it then you just raise and I will stop it okay raise your hand okay all right Okay, so that goes on, the gospel must be proclaimed to all the nations. So still end of the world, the, pro, the, pro, the, the gospel should be proclaimed, okay? And the, God will give the spirit, the power, the wisdom, how to speak. And the, the family, the parents, the members of the family, the whole family will be against you. And all he talks about, okay? So in my name, they will hate you. So that's a sign of the end of the world, okay? Now, till 13 he talked about end of the world and then again from 14 order he talks about the end of Jerusalem. Can I move forward? Okay, now again from 14 onwards he speaks of the end of Jerusalem now. So he's jumping from one topic to the other, alright, Jesus. So that's why when we come to for and come conclude with any doctrine, we have to be a little careful what the Jesus is saying. Sometimes we draw wrong conclusions. So now end of the Jerusalem he says is that whole thing about what will happen at the end of the job that those who are working should leave everything and go and all that he talks about. Okay, those who are in the field he must not turn back to fetch his cloak and all. So he's talking about the end of Jerusalem. Not about a word. No, end of Jerusalem. Right? Till and so pray that this may not happen in winter. And it goes on till 23. It's all about the end of Jerusalem. Okay? I go further, alright? Mm -hmm. yeah. For in those days there will be great distress, unparalleled parallels, since God created the world and such will never be again. Okay? So it talks about all that end of the so called uh, Jerusalem. For false Christ will come, they'll say. Somebody will come, but don't believe that person, okay? They will deceive you and all that thing. So, in a way, as a warning, be alert, okay? So this, that's a, okay, I have given you full warning, okay? So, that what is, is all about the Jerusalem. Okay. Mm. Not about the end of the world. Now, again, from there, he'll talk about the end of the world again. And so, what will the sign again? But those in those days, after time of despair, the sun will be darkened. The moon will be Okay, so the star will start falling. And all these are signs which you are then the son of man, man will come in cloud. So that's the end of the world and also the coming of the Jesus, a second coming. Okay, so he's sending an angel to gather the elect and all that. <coughs> Till 27 is the end of the world. Alright, good to know this passage. Okay, and then again he talks about the end of the world. Okay, and then here. He talks about, in truth I tell you, because the generation will pass away, all this thing will have taken place. So, okay, so remember this, my earth will pass away, but my word will not pass away. He talks about the end of Jerusalem, okay? So remember this, uh, in truth I tell you, before the generation has passed away, all these things will have taken place. So keep this in mind, because I'm coming back to this passage again. He said about that generation, 
So what he meant actually. So it's under the end of Jerusalem we're talking about, and he's talking about a generation or at present generation, and it's only talking about the end of the world. So sometimes people connect end of the world with the present generation. The end of the world did not come till this present generation passed away. So he's talking about end of the Jerusalem for that present generation. So don't mix all that. Okay? Alright. So now and then end of the world again and then he says that how what should be our attitude? Okay? So as for the dead day and hour, nobody knows. And then finally Jesus says, nobody knows the angels in heaven, the, nor the Son, no one knows but the Father. So keep this passage 32 in mind. Nobody knows, not even Jesus knows, only if God the Father knows. Okay, so what advice is giving us? Be on guard, stay awake. We never know when that time will come. So watch, be alert. So that keeps on repeating again and again, awake, stay awake, be alert, okay? Do not find you sleeping, okay? So watch out. So that's what the final advice gives us, okay? Jesus. And then the 37 is more of a conclusion. 36 is a conclusion. 37, sorry. And what I'm saying to you is that say to all, stay awake. That's with that chapter 13 of the Mark closes. Stay awake. Okay, so number of questions now, after looking at this passage, Based on this passage, some of the writers and uh, preacher, teacher told us that uh, Christ's coming is imminent, close at hand, as we go on, okay? So is that any passage telling us it's an imminent? Let's answer that question. Is the passage on the end of the world talking about the Jesus states three things. Based on the scripture passage, we analyze the scripture passage and say, so for the three things it tells us, the first thing it tells us is just state that no one knows when the end will take place. So we can't go beyond Jesus. If Jesus says no one knows when the end will come. So question is when. The end will come. Jesus second is coming. But when we do not know. So no one knows. The second thing is that he himself doesn't know. Not even he, Jesus knows himself. Okay. So that's what the Jesus is. Okay. So answering that question imminent coming. If no one knows. If Jesus doesn't know. Then who knows? Only God the Father knows. Alright? Only God the Father knows. Based on that passage about the end of the world. Not the end of Jerusalem. We know that soon after Jesus has told that this temple will be pulled down, it happened. And, and the Romans destroyed Jerusalem. It happened. Now the question remains about the end of the world. So in that chapter 13 he spoke about the end of the world and end of the Jerusalem. End of the Jerusalem took place, but end of the world yet, not yet. But when? So that's a question. No one knows, even Jesus doesn't know. Alright? So it should be very clear. Thus, thus, now this passage which I told you to remember, I'm coming back to this. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away if all these things take place. Is this passage talks about the end of the world or talks about imminent coming of Jesus? He says, unless this generation that is there with him will pass away, that thing will not happen. So that generation passed away, the end of the world has not come. Mm -hmm. So can we conclude that Jesus made a fall? The word was, it was not right, wrong? No, he was right. But when he said this passage, <coughs> put it back in the scripture, it goes back in that bracket where it is about the end of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. So he mentioned this about the generations about the end of Jerusalem. So they have seen end of the Jerusalem and they passed away. <coughs> so this passage does not come on the end of the world. So don't <coughs> misinterpret and so he's not talking about the end of the world that the generation of Jesus will pass away will not pass unless the end of the world comes down. So he's talking about the Jerusalem, end of Jerusalem. Okay? So that's what is. Second is, uh, is not talking about imminent coming. Okay? The first thing is because it talks about the end of, that passage is under the end of Jerusalem, not under the end of the world. 
Second, for the end of the world was not taking place till now and that engine is long gone, long dead. So Jesus was right as far as the generation is concerned only in connection with the end of Jerusalem and the end of the temple. Not of the end of the world. So that generation passed away and they have already seen the end of the Jerusalem and all that thing. And that Je what Jesus said that this temple will pull down, it happened. The Roman came and destroyed the temple, and so the Jerusalem was intact and all. So that was the whole thing, okay, that passage. Now, signs are of no help. So now, end of the world is coming. How do we know? Because there will be signs which Jesus talks about. But is that signs of much help? There are a number of signs which both three gospel talks about. And also other New Testament writers also speak. So I put down something. And also the other New Testament writers speak about in other texts in the New Testament. Uh, these, are the, these are the signs. Wars and rumors, which the three synoptic gospel talks about earthquake famines, social disintegration, persecution of Christian, <coughs> cosmic upheavals. Okay? And then other scripture writers in the New Testament speaks about the preaching of the gospel in the whole world. Unless it is preached to the whole world, the end of the world will not come about. Conversion, conversion of the nation, of the Jewish people. So waiting for the people, Jewish people to, be, to embrace and accept Jesus and coming of the Antichrist and departing from the true faith. So these are the signs which the gospel talks about with the other writer talks about. Is this sign a good sign to tell the end of the world has come? No, of course, we know in New Zealand uh, we have seen earthquake, but the end of the world has not come. So everywhere this so-called famine has taken place, and we have seen generation generation all this has taken place, but it is mm, not that. So, so sign of the end is not a good help to predict to say the end of the world is coming soon. No, are these signs reliable indicators? No. Not a good indicator because all these signs mentioned in the eschatology have been present in every generation. So just because you see a sign does not mean talk about and write about that, that the Lord is coming, is around, close, end of time is coming. No. Don't jump to a conclusion because we have seen this sign from the time Jesus was born, even before Jesus, the earthquakes and all that happened. So all this thing has happened, and even after Jesus, every century, every, century, every people, every. Generation have seen that. Okay, the preaching of the gospel in the whole world has not taken place yet. There are so many places, Tonkin and all the countries, people have not heard of the gospel. So in the New Testament writers, unless and until all the whole world, the gospel is preached, the end will not come. So where we have done, we have not reached. Missionaries have not gone. So still is long way off. So all that sign is not a good. Okay, the conversion of the nation, the Jewish people, is not yet taken place. So we still see the Jewish people are still far away from Christ and all the conversion of so many nations, Muslims and other countries are still not. Yeah. So that is not a sign to say the end of the world has come. Okay, and then also the coming of the Antichrist and departing from the true faith that we have seen. That people are living the faith and also Antichrist we have seen from the day one. From Jesus' time also now also. So these are not a reliable indicator. So sometimes that's when the whole this, this talk is to be careful. When we talk about this, talking about second coming, like we should be, yes, we are waiting for the second coming, but no such thing, prediction, day or time is given. But Jesus himself does not know. Nobody knows. So let's not go beyond his words. Right? So yeah. So that's what it is. Now, prediction of the end so far have proven false. People, the Christian, good Christian, preacher, teachers, writers, have written books and books, and ultimately who has benefited the writer? So that's why this is a piece of information message for all of you. Be careful for the first century onwards. Even Paul was, for a time being, he thought that uh, Jesus is imminent. And so 1 Thessalonians 4.15, if you read, he is really believing 
the Lord's coming is imminent, close at hand. So that's why. And then later on, he realized is that okay, it is delayed. So then he changes his whole approach, and then he talks about second coming. Okay, it's not imminent, as previously previously thought. So 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 in the understanding of the Paul itself, he also gets reconciled with the idea that Lord's coming is delayed. So instead of waiting and predicting, let us not predict, but better be prepared whenever he wants to come, let him come, but you prepare yourself. So that's why he talks in that language, all right? That's well, first century onwards. And then later on also we see since the first century onwards, till today we have all these writers and scripture right, of, of all that, their prophecy has proven wrong, okay? So only these people who have predicted and people fell for it, they made the money, the, book, the people who wrote the book, because we all want to know what will happen in future. We all are interested. Okay, if somebody can tell me, prophesy then saying what will happen about me tomorrow, I'll be happy. Yeah. But nobody will tell me, I'm that person. Now mind you, even if I, if I start writing that the second coming of Jesus is coming, don't buy the books from me. <laughs> okay, so be careful because it, because you can't go against words of Jesus, go beyond that. Jesus, when Jesus said, I myself don't know, why go, you know, beyond and out of the earth, okay? So, respect that words of Jesus, only God the Father knows, okay? The most significant failed prediction of Jehovah Witnesses. They predicted, once they predicted in 1914, did not happen, then again they tried in 1975, again the Jesus did not come. So that's what it is. So let us don't go against the gospel, don't go against the uh, word of God, against Jesus. Be sober and say, okay, whenever the Lord wants to come, it's okay. So the the, what I, the I, idea that we understanding is that, yes, Jesus talks about the second coming, and that's part of our belief. We wait when we do not know. The scripture says very clearly, there will be signs and all that thing. The signs is not the reliable predictor, okay? The signs have been happening from generation and generation. So that's what it is. We do not know when Jesus will come because. Why? But Jesus himself told us. So no precise date is given by Jesus himself. And he himself does not know. The signs are of no help. So don't go beyond that. So signs, sometimes we look for a sign because Jesus spoke about the signs. So then, then we are mixing too many things where in that passage, chapter 13, where Jesus talks about the end of the world and he talks about the end of the Jerusalem and all that thing. So where it fits in. So sometimes we are mixing too many things and all that. So the sign of the end is not of great help. We have seen that. Okay, the prediction of the end so far have proven false, okay? They tried, okay, in their intention was good, okay, to, but then if they can't go beyond what Jesus said, okay, so that's what it is. So three things we have to remember, we do not know when Jesus will come, because of Jesus himself told us, I do not know. So let's not go beyond that, all right? So that's what it is. Okay, therefore, what should be our attitude and behavior between now and then? Between now and then, what is that then? When he comes, whenever it happens, mm -hmm. when the end of the world will come. Mm -hmm. Okay, what should be our attitude? Okay, mm -hmm. our approach. Keep mm -hmm. ready. Keep ready. Keep ready. Yeah. Be ready. Mm -hmm. Be ready, okay? Sometimes it is good to know the date, you know? <laughs> uh, just, just so that everyone's aware that Jesus says, stay awake. Stay awake. Because he doesn't mean for 2,000 years. Yeah, you have to sleep also. Yeah. If you if you remain awake, then he'll call you soon. But you'd have to be ready further anyway. You'd have to be ready further because it's not the end of the world could be tomorrow for any of us. Yeah. Mm. Be ready any time. That's what I mean. The fact that we are ready, whether it happens today or tomorrow, I am ready. That should be the okay for. So our attitude should be always be ready for the end. That should be our attitude. That's the words of Jesus. What 
much of be ready for okay? that that's what he says the passage begins with take heed watch and pray that's why in the end when the message will be watch and pray watch and pray okay so that is the whole thing that's why jesus uh, before being crucified he told his disciples also watch and pray watch and pray so that you know they will not be tempted okay you know and that okay so the prayer is a key to anything okay so that's why it can be used anyway is watch and pray a testing time for you also watch and pray ask the lord to help you okay so that's a good message of a passage for us okay so that's what it is our, our approach and attitude should be behavior should be to watch and pray okay to conclude with and he concludes that passage the last verse is what i say to you i say to all watch be alert be ready be awake and that what it is okay he says okay okay so chapter 1 verse 30 33 to 37 it was okay so my mistake okay so okay okay the last word that was and then this so called the word watch comes four times in that chapter 30 a very important words okay watch be alert stay alert okay so that what it is okay yeah Paul stated that the day of Jesus second coming is uncertain and therefore let us keep awake and be sober okay so that's what it is so finally he got reconciled to this idea that second coming is delayed okay so it's not around the corner somewhere but just wait awake be awake and keep, be sober keep on praying so in line with Jesus Paul is now in line with Jesus watch be alert so that's what it is we should be all right Okay, so in conclusion, now we believe in the second coming of Jesus, but we do not know when. That's a part of a belief. That's a part of a creed. And every time at mass we say that Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. And also once in a year, before Christmas, Advent time, the church in a way helps us to remind us, draws our attention to these aspects of our beliefs that we also believe that He will come again. to judge the living and the dead he come as a king so that what it is okay and then so do not believe any preacher teacher writer who claim to know the time and place okay so so if you believe then you have to pay money also to buy <laughs> but you will not get anything it will not come through the okay the prediction will not come through okay okay so you are the words of jesus and not the words of any religious deceiver okay so that's what we need to be very clear is that gospel is very clear words of jesus very clear the church is also telling us that even church cannot predict so no one can predict jesus said the founder a master said i do not know so let's not dig deep, deep into all that and say how and all that so let's be there sober okay and so rather be ready for the end of the world today Yes. And the best thing is, be ready for your end. For your end means when you die. Be prepared for your end. When you die, that's the end of the world for you. Okay. So that is what is more important than practically. The end of a person's life is the end of the world as far as that person is concerned. So instead of looking for a sign outside when is that end coming don't go out inward here prepare for your own end be ready for your own end when you when your own end comes you have to stand before god the letter of hebrew tells us that there's once we die there is one judgment and then we have to stand before god so end of our life means I will not see this world again. So that's the end of the world for me. For that particular person. So instead of predicting, don't predict. Don't talk about all that. Whenever Lord wants to come, whenever that happens, happens. Science will come and will happen. She will think she will so many things happening as gospel talks about. We don't get frightened. We don't get really frightened. That's what we need to be sober, to pray. Sometimes frightening things happen and all that thing sometimes. So, but then 
we should have a strong faith in the Lord because He is in control. He is the master of the nature and all that. Mm -hmm. That what is the, mm -hmm. the message. One of the shortest session that I did to him. He finished early. Mm -hmm. Any question? You are not. Mm -hmm.